So about eight years ago, I was talking with somebody, and he was asking me what I loved about math and teaching it. And what I told him is that it's the only subject where my students don't have to trust me. If I set things up well, they can figure it out for themselves. Here's what he said to me: Everything you love about math is what free people love about democracy. <laughs> That juxtaposition has lodged itself in my mind ever since. The first thing it meant to me is that a mathematical learning community could be a kind of a democratic society: everybody with equal standing, nobody with privileged access to the truth, everybody with a fundamental right not to believe what they're being told and to insist on justification, the community having an obligation to honor that right, to listen to doubt, to hash things out, and actually, by doing it, that's how it galvanizes. At our best. This is actually how mathematicians build knowledge. You think we're just sitting there scribbling, and then we're like, "I've got it." <laughs> But no other mathematician is going to believe you until you convince them. At our best, this is also how people in a democratic society make decisions. Rule, for, rule by the people, right? So math and democracy can each be metaphors for how the other one is supposed to work. But recently, it's been seeming to me that it's actually a great deal more than a metaphor. Math is literally central to what democracy will or will not become because it's lodged itself at the heart of modern life: the algorithm, AI, big data, the blockchain. When we get our news online, which news we see? When we do business online, why we think our money is safe? It pretty much all comes down to linear algebra, probability, information theory, number theory. <laughs> so this presents a problem for democracy because if the architecture of modern life requires advanced technical training, who gets to participate in designing the world we all live in? Because it's supposed to be all of us. But it also means math can help. I'm going to illustrate with a concrete example: gerrymandering. You know, when lawmakers draw the map to favor their own party, Americans across the political spectrum are not down with this. We are supposed to be picking those guys. They're not supposed to be picking us. In principle, courts have been sympathetic to the issue, but in practice, they've found it difficult to set limits because it's hard to measure and say you've gone too far. But there is a new idea in town. This is some math I believe every citizen should know. The slides I'm going to show you are from a research group at Duke University, run by Jonathan Mattingly. But there are several different groups working on this. Here's how it goes: Write some code to generate a random but legal redistricting of the state. Do it a few more times. Then do it tens of thousands of times. Now take real election data from actual elections and run it through each of your randomly generated maps, asking for each one: Had this been the map, what would have been the outcome? In this way, you get a distribution of results. Now you can ask: For the map that was actually passed by the legislature, where does it fit in that distribution? Was it typical, or was it an extreme outlier? Was it designed to represent the will of the people, or the will of the legislature? Now, the Supreme Court is considering two partisan gerrymandering cases right now, and this idea was presented in one of those cases. So we're going to get a chance to see what they think, probably very soon. If you're watching this on video, maybe you already know. But regardless of whether the court takes note this time, I hope this illustrates how protecting democracy sometimes needs to be a conversation about math. What I want us to take from this: first, to my fellow mathematicians and other technical folks, we can make democracy stronger. Our kind of power matters a lot right now, and we can use it for good. Not only that, but if we don't, we're hoarding a resource that's meant to be shared. However, we cannot do it alone. 
That's not democracy. Our advanced technical training did not include anything about how to understand our own biases and blind spots. It does not entitle us to design the future. We need our fellow citizens as equal partners. Now to my fellow citizens. Do not be seduced by the lie that math is not relevant to you. <laughs> Whether you personally ever do any math again, people are going to be making decisions shaping your life and using math to do it. You can be at the table on those decisions or not. Democratic society belongs to all of us. Math does too. Thank you. <laughs>